Hello everybody, hope that you're doing very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we will be going through the question, is it time to sell Bitcoin? What we're going to be going through is the thesis of when everybody is really bearish, we like to look for long positions. And when everybody is really bullish, we like to look for short positions. So I suppose the question of the day is, is it now time to sell? As we see the vast majority of the world ultra bullish on Bitcoin. Everybody right now is talking about um, Michael Saylor, talking about different things, you know, micro strategy, shilling Bitcoin. You know, this is the most shilling, you know, it, literally I watched that video and it's, I've never seen such a shill in my life. But, you know, it's crazy. There's everybody's ultra bullish right now. You're seeing Visa get into Bitcoin. Everyone's like, oh my God, this is like, oh, bullish, 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 bullish. You know, so I, what I'm going to be saying is, is, is this time to sell while everybody's ultra bullish? Okay, are we going to be breaking through resistance? Yes or no? Well, I'll be giving you my perspective in this in today's video. So I do hope that you thoroughly enjoy it. And let's begin. So to begin with, we can quite simply answer the reason why we got this pullback this morning. And this was quite a quick drop to the downside. And it's pretty easy to say why this happened. Really simply in trading, you have a pattern known as the swing failure pattern. That's when you come up, you take the high, you close back below the high. Really simply, that's a bearish swing failure pattern. That's exactly what we had on the charts this morning. We obviously got a pretty quick pullback to around $37,000. $37,000 was our previous range point of control. Naturally, that's going to be acting as support. And we actually got a bounce off of that level this morning. My perspective on this is that we had lots of people trying to buy the breakout this morning. You close back below the level. And naturally, you have so many people trapped into their longs at the highs. You can get this swift you know, decline in price. But then emotions flying left, right and center, I suppose. I viewed this as an opportunity to actually take a long position uh, based off the fact we had a lot of fear at those lows. Like, like you know, we're seeing like 50 million selling into the lows. I personally viewed this as bullish locally. And so I actually got into a long off of 37,000. Really simply for the fact we had just swing fire pattern the high and we had such a quick drop to the lows and then at those lows during the massive, you know, during that pretty massive drop that we saw, we just saw massive shorts opening, you know, crazy amount of really high leverage short positions opening, in my opinion, at support. So trading is never going to be easy. And what I mean by this is we could come down lower, but the likelihood of just going like this straight down, in my opinion, was very low, simply for the fact we had come into the POC. We had had millions and millions and millions of shorts opening here. It would have been too easy to just continue to fall down. What you want to see is that decline in price to basically liquidate the shorts before you, you see any further downside. So that was my reasoning this morning. Really simply, you know, pretty simple if we're honest. Lots of selling into the low. I don't feel we're going to break down, at least not this first time. It would be too easy. I went into a long position and I still hold that long at, at the moment. So as it stands right now, I'm only in a long, like the only position I hold right now is a long. Obviously, we're, we're trying to answer the question in today's video. Of, is this the time to sell Bitcoin? Well, in, in that perspective, I, I would say I am currently not because I am only in a long position. But where where could we be saying, OK, this is now this could be our time to short Bitcoin. I would say currently I'm not, and I would not short looking at this chart right now. I would not short Bitcoin. What I would be saying to myself is, okay, I want to try and get into the most high probability trade possible. Uh, in, and in my opinion, it's not happened yet. So what I, do, I would personally want to see is a move up higher for a short. But the areas that I'm interested in is around, once again around thirty-eight thousand dollars. This is obviously our. This is now our range point of control. So naturally. $38,000 is going to be pretty key here. You can see that actually comes in $37,960. <laughs> so this is going to be a pretty key level. And then for me, it's, it's, it's going to be key. of Do we actually hit that and then reject and head start to head down? Then naturally, yeah, obviously that can equal a short. Or alternatively, do we reclaim the point of control as support 
And then I believe that we're going to be heading up a higher again, looking for 39,000 region as, as your next sort of target. So I think it is, it's not really a game of, I'm not going to come in and say exactly as predicted, because it's actually a case of, you know, you, you got to look at the charts. You got to look at the charts and you have to say, what's the most probable here? So it's not about doing a crazy prediction. In my opinion, today is not about doing any sort of crazy predictions. In my opinion, today is looking at the chart and saying to yourself, what's the most probable that's going to happen here? And I, I myself would say the most probable is that we're going to be moving up and at least testing that point of control. And then from there, I can make another informed decision. If we reject the point of control and change our market structure, naturally, I will look to close my long and take a short. Alternatively, we clear that point of control and I'd be pretty bullish looking up for my next level to the upside. So it's not, I'm never going to be approaching this in the perspective of, oh, this definitely happens. Look at this, look at this, exactly as I predicted yesterday. You know, what I'm saying is that let's just remove the emotions because I feel that there's so much emotions flying through the chart and I feel sorry for so many people because lots and lots and lots of people are losing money because they let their emotions get the better of them you know fomo buying the highs for a swing failure pattern and then likely what people will do is buy here sell here i mean it's crazy this is obviously a short of a swing failure pattern that's a really easy short by the way and in my opinion anyway this was a pretty easy long off the back test of 37k maybe that doesn't work out fully but i'm you know i'm happy to hold that long in a moment you know, and, and the way that I approach the charts is it's all about it's all about probabilities. You know, some people will say trading is a gamble. I, I can tell you with one, you know, that trading is not a gamble. There's no gambling going on here because what we're doing is we have a statistical edge in the market. We say we, we know we look at this, you know, like the swing failure pattern of those highs. You know, you, you take that trade. It's, it's, it's a good trade when you start to look at the volume that was trapped upon the highs. When you come back below and you see, you know, millions and millions of trapped longs well naturally it's going to be a good short the same when we come down to those lows and we saw millions and millions and millions of shorts opening here but the likelihood that we just continue down there because we're seeing absorption is obviously very low and obviously you've got to look at absorption because otherwise you could actually be you know shorting into a proper breakdown longing into a proper breakup so absorption is obviously the key but when you start to understand how to read volume correctly and you can start to see these absorption you can see those trap traders you just got to you just got to say to yourself we're not gambling because we're actually trading a statistical edge. We're seeing the same pattern occur time and time and time again. And we know if we trade this pattern consistently over time, we should be walking away with more money than we lose. So what we're not going to be doing today is saying, I'm not going to actually answer the question of, is this the time to sell Bitcoin? Because in my, well, I guess I kind of, again, no financial advice in this video. I'm not a financial advisor. I will not tell you what to do with your money. I'm just giving my opinions. But my opinion right now is I'm long on Bitcoin. And really simply, I'm going to trade the chart. If we reject the point of control or alternatively, we don't make it. And, you know, because again, probabilities, there's a potential that this is the high right here. And we do just head straight down. You know, that's a potential. Obviously, I don't feel that that's the most probable. Hence why I'm still in my long. But I do acknowledge that it's possible for that to happen because literally anything can happen in trading. So the way that I'm approaching this is, is I'm long. I really simply know where I'm wrong on that trade and that's where I'll have a stop loss. And if my stop loss hits, I'm absolutely okay and fine with that. You know, I'm I'm okay with that hitting on this trade. I have already, by the way, taken take profit one, which obviously gives me a bit of an advantage on this as well. But you know, that's for that's for a separate topic. I know where I, I know where I'd like to take this for 38k. And then from 38k I can again look into the charts, look at the volume and say, okay, are we going to be breaking through this and moving up to the range high which is around 39,000? Or will we reject here and look to change market structure and head back down lower? Okay, this is not something that you can predict. This is something that you actually have to look at in the time. You know, how many people are buying, how many people are saying, are oh, you seeing those? You know, so we actually do have bearish divergences here. Okay, so you do actually have bearish divergences here, to be fair, going into the daily open. So I, I suppose like these are the sort of things that you're looking at. Well, naturally, that would, one could say it increases the probabilities that you are. Well, you're definitely seeing absorption here then off the high. So people are trying to short this. It's like I was saying yesterday, context is really important. And for me, the context of just running the lows. Yeah, you don't obviously have to be in a trade all the time. Sometimes you can just wait if you want, just, just wait 
on the sidelines you know there's no shame in waiting on the sidelines for what you could class as a higher probability trade or, or a better trading setup you know there are times where i think it's absolutely more than acceptable to just say i don't want to trade this right now I'll, I'll wait for more move to the downside to take a short where i've got a bit more confirmation that we're heading lower or alternatively you know i'll, I'll wait for a reclaim of the point of control to look for a long and you could say right now I'm, I'm comfortable with not being in a trade because I don't really want to take a long here because I'm longing into the resistance. I don't want to take a short here because we've just ran the lows. You know, I'll, I'll just I'll just sit on the sidelines and wait for a better trade to come to me rather than, you know, rather than just taking a trade in the moment with no plan. That's going to leave you longing the highs and shorting the lows. You know, just wait patiently. A setup will come along. Um, and that's kind of what's I would, if I was in zero trade right now, so if I was in no position, I would be waiting. Obviously, I got my long off of 37,000. I will show you this, by the way. I got a long off of 37,000. And um, I have already hit that take profit one. I've got my stop loss set. And for me, it's a win win trade. So whatever happens on this, you know, it's a win. But if I was in no trade, I'd probably be waiting. I wouldn't want to short here because we've just ran the lows. I wouldn't want a long here because we're at the re resistance of the point of control. So really simply, I, I would wait if I was in no position. You know, there's no there's no shame in in, in, in waiting. Um, so yeah, that, that's my perspective on the Bitcoin chart. I, I do personally feel that there's a lot of people ultra bullish right now, like ultra, ultra bullish, which does worry me slightly, I suppose. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you've got to trade the chart. You've got to trade the probabilities. It doesn't matter what we want or what we think. You know, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day that the only thing that matters is what, what's happening on the chart. You know, who's actually buying, who's actually selling. And when we start to read that, we can acknowledge, okay, well, then this this is the most probable that's going to happen. I hope that I've given you a bit of perspective on this chart today. I'm, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of emotional videos, people ultra bullish or people ultra bearish maybe you know you're going to see extreme viewpoints and this and this and i suppose that this is how many people lose money because they get so confused one person's really bullish one person's really bearish who do i listen to well i think the only person you've got to listen to is nobody and actually just trade the charts because the charts don't the charts don't lie you know the, literally the charts don't lie you got a swing failure pattern of the high that's a good short you got absorption at the low that's a good long you know the charts aren't going to lie to you Whereas you could get misinformation of people being really bullish up here when they should have shorted and people really bearish down here when they should have longed. But the, the volume and the charts don't lie. So, you know, remove that confusion by by learning what to do here and, and you should be better off. Uh, but yeah, that's my analysis of today. Hope you've enjoyed. Uh, I suppose what I'll say is if this video, let's say, gets a thousand likes because I love to do the like goals, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm because without that YouTube that algo, you just are pretty done for uh <laughs> they, they basically punish you so what i'll say is if this video gets i don't know a thousand likes i'll do a live stream for you all where we'll talk about this uh what's going on we'll, uh, we'll see whether what happens at that point of control maybe um but yeah if you've enjoyed the video give a like down below remember you can subscribe to the channel tick the notification bell then you'll be alerted as soon as we go onto that live stream and i suppose if you want the education of how we're reading the volume like this um you know how i'm reading absorption then naturally this is what we teach over at chartchampions.com we are an educational group we're not a signals group so we give education of how to read the volume uh, so if you want to learn about these footprint charts then you know that's that's the education that we give we we are a educational group not a, not a signals group but um yeah long at the moment take profit here stop loss in in entry and we'll see how the trade progresses but at the moment i'm in a long but slightly cautious if i'm totally honest with you waiting for the reaction off the point of control there's the summary hope you've enjoyed thank you ever so much and maybe catch you in the live stream later thank you and goodbye